What you notice when you stop thinking is the native condition of your mind. It's completely clear, wide open, like a clear sky. <coughs> totally pure. So repeat that recognition <coughs> whenever you naturally remember for short moments. In that repetition, in this practice of short moments, what I began to see was that whatever I was thinking, whatever I was experiencing, whatever I was feeling, whatever I was sensing, was nothing other than the dynamic energy of this pristine open mind, this intelligence. And with each short moment, what I saw with increasing certainty, that it was inclusive of all data. So every time I took a short moment with this thought, or that feeling, or that sensation, I found open intelligence shining brightly within and as that particular data stream. So each time I repeated that practice, this confidence grew that it really was all-inclusive. It included my happiness, it included my sadness, it included um, the doubts about my practice, it included my comparisons with other people, and that all of these were nothing other than this bright shine of mind, the, the love pervading this open intelligence. And when I stopped the habit of making or trying to make something out of all of these ever-changing descriptions, then there is this pervasive sense of ease and openness, the clarity and capacity to relate with love and openness in all situations, including to myself. Every single time I take somebody, something, including myself, to be in any way fixed or solid or defined by my thoughts or descriptions, there is a collapsing into data, there is a forgetting of open intelligence, there is the immediate perception that it's suffering, that it shouldn't be like this, and there is an inability to relate with openness, warmth and love. And it's the same mechanism in all relationships, whether that's to myself and how I relate to my own thoughts and feelings and experiences, and in relationship to every other single person, place or thing. Either I'm collapsed into the descriptions and I'm relating based on those, or I'm resting naturally as this vast openness of mind. It's just this binary choice on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And it's absolutely vital, like we heard in the talk today, that I see what happens when I relate to myself and other people based on focusing on the descriptions. And so, in terms of um, suffering, one of the things that becomes clearer and clearer is just how, um, how well I train myself to focus in on my thoughts and my descriptions, particularly about myself. And now I come to this teaching and this training, and exactly the same thing happens. So I hear something like the lack of suffering. And I begin to look round at all the other people who are obviously not suffering. And that becomes a cause of suffering for me. I'm suffering because other people are not suffering, so I'm not like them, and I'm suffering, and I'm thinking, well then where do I get to? Now, it's a long way for me to go, I'm obviously far from there. Stop thinking. Take a short moment. Recognise that those thoughts too are nothing other than this bright shine of mind. And in that instinctive recognition, there is the, the ending of suffering. There is the recognition of completely pervasive love and really loving ourselves as we are, with our doubts, with our concerns, with our hopes, our fears, with all of it exactly as it is. In terms of um, finding what the strengths, gifts and talents are, I, I was so well trained in putting myself down. Like, ah, oh, it... it, it it, it, it almost makes me cry how well trained I was at, at putting myself down, self-criticism, self-judgment, self-blame, and being able to recognize open intelligence in lots of circumstances, and, and yet, you know, I, I still don't know what my strengths, gifts and talents are, and, you know, other people are just shining so brightly, and look at them contributing this and that, and they're just doing it with such grace and ease, and I still don't know what mine are, and... The two ways that I found to really explore this topic were firstly to keep practicing, 
to continue to rest with those thoughts, to see that this was just another opportunity for me to either collapse into these stories of self, um, self-judgment and criticism and blame. This was another thing where, you know, I was just wrong again. You know, look at everybody else. They're all brilliant, but poor old me. I don't know what mine are even, let alone how to contribute them. This is another powerful opportunity to practice and to see that here I can suffer or not on a moment-to-moment basis. And the other way that I found, and this is the genius of the, the system that's been set up by Candice Rinpoche, is for me to show up in the Four Mainstays. And there are so many subtleties and nuances as to how this has worked. Um, so I could say, for example, the different data and different belief systems that I didn't know I was emphasizing rather than showing up as open intelligence. And the first one, and the most obvious one, was um, cultivating simply by showing up openly humility. Humility. And and I've mentioned this before, but when I first I, I completed the 12 empowerments and I wanted to come and contribute something to balance view, you know, I want to contribute something to balance view. And so I said, I turned up and I said, what, you know, what can I do to help? And, and I thought, oh, you know, maybe I'll be, you know, maybe I'll be editing the texts or, you know, I've got a degree. And, and so, and I, I was, um, I've read loads of books and, 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 and uh, I was asked if I would like to help set out the chairs in the open meeting. I was outraged. I was like, dear, I, do you know who I am? You are, you know, you're asking me to put the chairs out in the open meeting. I've got a degree in philosophy. And so it was amazing to see, first of all, this, this, was, this was just my arrogance and pride. And one of the ways, one of the belief systems, one of the things I'd taken myself to be was this educated um, person, this, this person that had learned this, that had this to offer and should be treated and respected in this way. And all of these ways, these ideas that I had tried to fix myself and limit myself and portray myself in these particular ways were nothing other than limitations and avoidance of simply showing up with complete open-hearted love. And the subtleties of this are what I see just opening up in their own time as I show up in the Four Mainstays. And it was amazing actually to see that with all of this raging, with all of my kind of indignation about being asked to do this, I turned up at the open meeting and I set out the chairs, like with each chair I was trying to work out where the two trainers were sitting, how that chair related to all the chairs sitting in front so that the person could see both trainers. I'm trying to work that out for every, each of the 60 chairs in the training, you know, and it was just amazing to see that even with something like that, I could bring such care and attention and love to it, whilst the thoughts were raging. And, and this was amazing, and then I've also seen, on a really practical level, that when I just show up with openness and say, what can I do to help, I'm asked to do loads of things that I would never normally choose to do. Like, never normally choose to do. And so I've learned loads of skills and practical things that I had no idea I could do. Um, some of which I've enjoyed, some of which I haven't. But it's just this, this engaging in activities where whatever I'm doing in Balanced View, I can clearly see it's of benefit to all. And this gives it a completely different perspective. I see I'm contributing to Candice Rinpoche's vision Whatever I'm doing, if I'm making chai, if I'm putting out the chairs, if I'm sat up here, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing whatever I can do to, 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 to contribute. And not with my ideas of what contribution should be like, but with an open-heartedness of seeing and of being open to hear what will be of most benefit. What can I do? And that's been a really gradual and sometimes painful process of me for me because you know I've had so much arrogance and pride you know like so much you know it just bubbles up and yet each time it bubbles up I know what to do I'm so well supported I can practice I can write to my trainer so like for me writing to the trainer you could say 
is a perfect um, um, I can't think of the right word but it's a perfect um, example of how I can relate to everybody so in every relationship there are data there are data that come up in every single relationship um, I don't know how it is for you but even with my closest friend I find them at times extremely irritating I find them boring I find them funny I love them I don't want to spend time with them I feel like I should spend more time with them um, it's just this ever-changing display of data and when I'm basing my relating on this ever-changing display of data that there's no consistency there's no openness because the data are always changing when I feel positive towards them then it's easy to relate and when I feel negative it's really difficult so what we're doing in each short moment is recognizing that open intelligence is the basis of the positive thoughts and the negative thoughts and the neutral ones in between and when I rest as open intelligence rather than emphasizing the descriptions and I relate from there it's a completely different experience in terms of how I show up in the relationship it's so different so you could say in the relationship with the trainer it's an opportunity to test out showing up with openness regardless of what you think or feel and the way you could do that you can write once a week to your trainer and make a real commitment to do that regardless of whatever's going on you might think I have nothing to write then you can write to your trainer dear trainer and I've done this many times I don't feel that like I have anything really to write to you this week but and suddenly I'm writing <laughs> and the reason I do that is because it makes relying on open intelligence easier I don't do it because I just like writing emails I do it because it makes it easier like I, there's, I mean there are, <laughs> there are things I like in Balanced View but there's loads of things it's like coming to an open meeting at the beginning I was like oh this is oh, you know open meetings I want to be on the beach I want to play frisbee plastic chairs boring it's not I don't come to open meetings because I have loads of positive data I come to open meetings because it makes recognizing and relying on open intelligence easy and this is by far the most important thing in my life like by far because it benefits everything else in my life so it's just amazing to, to give up the right to be a victim again and again in each short moment to, to cut the story to stop thinking stop describing rest naturally use the support and I, Candice Rinpoche has responded to, to your question about well why did we end up in this mess why did we end up not knowing about open intelligence and I can just remember one amazing response she she gave and maybe we can watch the talk one day soon but she just just says well I don't need to know you know I could spend hours thinking about it and coming up with loads of stories and descriptions but what's important is that I know now that I, I have a choice and I can demonstrate and contribute to the era of great benefit that is happening now it doesn't really matter what happened in the past what's important is what I do with my current moment data stream and then how I show up in life and how I then proceed in life based on that education that I now have and like with all questions like that the more deeply I rest the more insights I have so there's a beautiful line from the training if I can remember it correctly data knows nothing about open intelligence but open intelligence knows everything about data and so one way you could understand that is that the more deeply you rest as open intelligence the more clarity and insight you will have about all aspects of data including all data including philosophical questions educational social personal you'll just become clearer and clearer about all of it because you know the nature of all of it you're not fooled into thinking that data have an independent nature and then behaving and relating as if they do if you find yourself trying to make open intelligence into something just relax it's so tempting
we hear things in the training like soothing energy and then you feel a bit of soothing energy it's oh I've got it I've got it I've got it and then the soothing, en soothing energy goes away it's gone it's gone it's gone short moments repeated many times and it's great this is why we have the support because these pitfalls these these um, cul-de-sacs of descriptions of so-called realization are, are, are very tempting they're very easy to get drawn down into you know bliss ah oh, bliss got it ah oh, this is it finally ah oh, it's gone it's gone and now we know what to do we don't take any of the descriptions to be anything. We repeat the short moments many times.